My name is Jonathan Knapp, and I'm running for Josephine County Sheriff. I've shared with people that I grew up here in Josephine County, graduated from Hidden Valley High School in the class of 1979, and then I left to serve in the United States Air Force. I served four years in the beautiful state of North Dakota. When it was time to re-enlist and do four more in North Dakota, I decided someplace else was warmer. So I went to work with the Salvation Army for 15 years. I was the finance officer for the southern half of the state of California, helping the Salvation Army units down there write their budgets, and then I traveled around auditing them to make sure that they kept their budgets and followed policy and procedure. Before going to Arizona and going to work with the fourth largest sheriff's office in the nation, I worked there for 18 years before I retired last year. Four of those years of patrol, 14 years as a supervisor. I supervised patrol, property and evidence, court security, uh, the hiring unit, and I wrote some of the policies and procedures for some of the new programs that they had. The last appointment I had was in the court security division as the administrative sergeant. I worked as the liaison between the sheriff's office and the county to build a $300 million courthouse and build it with the specs needed so that the sheriff's office would have administration wings and holding cells for the 500 inmates that we took to court each and every day. In that appointment, I supervised 30 deputies and 100 detention officers on a daily basis. I retired in October to move back home. This is where I grew up, this is where my family lives, and I needed to be here for one year to run. So people want to know, why did I pick that time? Oregon requires that you be a resident one year before the election, so I worked up until the last day. I would still be working there, if I didn't have to resign or retire to get one year residency in Oregon. I love my job, I love law enforcement. When I was working with the Salvation Army, I ran an alcohol and drug center in Tacoma, Washington. I opened the Salvation Army in McMinnville, Oregon. I was, as I said, a finance officer for Southern California. I did major disasters from Hawaii to Mississippi. So I've got a vast range of experiences combined 30 years in management positions and 18 years in a sheriff's office. When I put those two things together, it makes me uniquely qualified to manage a sheriff's office, such as the Josephine County Sheriff's Office. There are a lot of things that I want to do. My problem is bringing back the nighttime patrol, the evenings, the weekends. The residents of Josephine County deserve that and they expect that. I live in the county, my 75 year old mother lives in the county. We know what it's like if you have to pick up the phone in the middle of the night and call somebody and you're not gonna get them. They're just not available. But I believe that the resources are there and properly managed. And that's not to say that, that the sheriff is mismanaging. But with my budgetary experience and priority experience, I believe that I can better use that budget to uh, meet the needs of the residents that live in the unincorporated areas of Josephine County. I want to investigate every crime. A lot of people in Josephine County don't report crime because there's not anybody to answer the phone or they don't believe it's gonna get the proper investigation. Every crime needs to be investigated. Even if it's the fact that the squirrels knocked your flower planter off onto your patio and it broke and you want somebody to come out and find out if that's where it really happened, at that point in time, that's the most important thing in your life. And so it needs to be the most important thing to the sheriff's office to come out there and look at it and then be able to tell you, hey, you've got some unruly squirrels and we can't help you with that. But at least we cared enough to show up. So as your sheriff, that's my first goal, to be able to show up. Thank you. Good, good evening, everybody. My name is Dave Daniel, and uh, I am your Josephine County Sheriff, and it's an honor to serve you. It has been an honor for the past uh, four years. I started my law enforcement career in 1995 with the Grants Pass Department of Public Safety. I've been here for, I've been in law enforcement for 24 years, and it, it really is a privilege to be in this field. Uh, Mr. Knapp knows that. And uh, 21 of those 24 years I spent right here in Josephine County. I've chased people, fought people, arrested people, 
took care of people uh, with compassion. Uh, and for 24 years here in Josephine County, I, I raised my family here. Uh, both my kids are off to college, but uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. You know, I could stand up here and tell you, oh, I got a master's degree. Um, oh, I've been, I went to Oregon State University and got a bachelor's degree. I have an executive management, supervisory, basic, intermediate, advanced level of certification. But I stand on what I've done. The last four years, we took, I took over this office and it was in disarray. It was demoralized. And it's been a long road. It's been a long road of hope, for sure, for the last four years. But we're getting there. This, this ship is upright and it's moving in the right direction. And I really, truly want you to know that. Uh, I'll probably state, state it again at the end over at the table over there. I have a pamphlet and, and it, 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 it basically dictates just that. It shows you that in bar graph form of where we were decimated with 61 layoffs in 2012 uh, back up to over 87 employees uh, now. Uh, the hiring has been difficult. That's been kind of the, the snail's pace for us. Finding that qualified individual with a, uh, in an organization that is uh, doesn't quite pay as much as some of the organizations surrounding us, Jackson County, City of GP, OSP. You know, we have resident deputies now, and uh, I'm still, I am speaking of the 12 hour patrols at night, that is my priority as well. There's 12 hour patrols currently, 20, uh, seven days a week, 20, uh, on, well, in a 24 hour period. Uh, but I think with some new hires that I'm looking at hiring right now, I have to hire eight new deputies this year if I can find them, if I can find the qualified, that's going to go to a nighttime patrol. So that's, that is my number one goal right now as well. But I also wanted to increase communication with, the, with, our, uh, with our communities. North Valley, Murphy, Williams, Illinois Valley. So resident deputies, I started those and it was a, it was a goal of mine, not necessarily a promise back when I campaigned. But the communication is very important and citizens needed a liaison to get to our office. Uh, so they started September 1st, and the, so far the program is working fantastically. Civil Division, some improvements, went from four months to get a concealed handgun license, down to three weeks. Uh, incredible, and, and that's management. And that's just, you know, leadership and making things function properly. Deputies in our schools, we have them now. I have three, well, I should say I have one, I am hiring two more school resource deputies. How long has it been that our children have been left out in the cold when all these terrible things are happening around our country. Uh, as I stated, I've been here 24 years, 20, 21 years, I've uh, seen, been through a lot. Crisis management, um, the fires, the Merker Belknap plane crash search. I've proven to be a leader that can actually take care of business, get things done properly. Evacuation, evacuation levels are very important to me, just with this recent past fire. I had to call out and request the National Guard. We had to, I had to go to my uh, Sheriff's Association, Oregon State Sheriff's Association, and request mutual aid from five different counties send deputies down here so they could, while you were pushed out of your homes, they could guard your homes at night. We just received a $600,000 grant for the investigations that I applied for, for the investigations into illegal marijuana operations. That's huge finding money outside. It's the second grant I've been successful at attaining. We got 10 treatment beds from uh, Justice Reinvestment Funds uh, to help, to help try, to try to stop the cycle of substance abuse if they're outside the jail. They get in the jail, they get treatment, they get out of the jail, they get treatment. Because it's a little bit about rehabilitation too. I think probably most of you agree with me with that. SRS monies just came in. I have three more deputies coming and then again those two school resource deputies. I promised long ago to re redo the, or look into the policy and procedure manual for the Josephine County Sheriff's Office. We've completed that. It wasn't done sin since 2010. And that's ridiculous in this law enforcement environment. Promise made, promise given. Is that the end of it or is, it, is that time? What? 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. I'm in this not for fame or fortune. I didn't do this just to get to cruise through a career. I didn't put on my signs, re-elect Sheriff Daniel. I want to get elected again and push this county forward in a positive direction. And that's where we're going. We're back. Thank you.
All right, next we're going to have candidates asking questions of one another. Uh, Jonathan, if you could ask a question of uh, Dave Daniel. My question is a simple one, but a very important one. What do you see as the greatest threat to Josephine County residents, and what do you as Sheriff plan to do to address that threat? Uh, thank you, Mr. Knapp. I think the greatest threat overall period right now, uh, well, it's short of nuclear war, but I think we're looking at really the nighttime patrols is very concerning to me. The greatest threat is the opportunity for an individual to go out at night unchecked is, is huge. The question is, how do we do it? It's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, the numbers, I've looked at them with budget, with my undersheriff. Uh, we've, we've sat on, on, I've tried to go to 20. It's just not there quite yet. If I can get OSP to get uh, our dispatch services covered, which I've already requested they assist us with, we'll get our, our, our deputies out there at night so we can uh, start covering some people that otherwise, you know, don't get the help they need. All right, David, you can ask a question now of Jonathan. Okay, uh, Mr. Knapp, um, and it's a very short and very uh, simple question, maybe not easy. Uh, what is your, we know that Josephine County is, has terrible funding histori historically. We're, we're changing that. Um, but we're not there yet. We're halfway to where I think we should be with detectives divisions and more. What are your specific plans for permanent, stabilized uh, funding for Josephine County Sheriff's Office? Taxes are that four-letter word that nobody wants to hear, but the inevitable part of operating our government. So we have those 58 cents. 58 cents for years and years and years was enough to operate the Sheriff's Office and all of the functions in Josephine County. And I believe that if we properly manage our money, that 58 cents can do it again. But what we have to do is look at the priorities and then we have to hold our commissioners feet to the fire that the priority for the county commissioners is to make sure that law enforcement is funded. There are a lot of other things that we do in the county that are as important. Library is important. Schools are definitely important. Uh, the animal control is important. But law enforcement and the protection of the citizens of Josephine County has got to be the priority. And so working with the county commissioners, I want to slice out a piece of pie that makes sure that the sheriff's office becomes the priority. And if that means, I'm walking out of this camera, and if that means that we have to go to the county commissioners and ask them to lock in a budget for the sheriff's office and give the sheriff control of his budget so that he can operate the programs the way that they need to be run, then that's what we need to do. The money is there, we just need to be good stewards of it and show the people that we can provide the services that they need with the money that they need, that the, with the money that they give us. I'm going to ask a few questions here for the next few minutes, many of them submitted by you. I'll direct it, to, uh, actually we'll direct it to uh, Dave Daniel first, if that's okay. And then we'll uh, kind of reverse as time goes on here. Probably the biggest emailed question that I received at KCMD from Josephine County over the last uh, few weeks had to do with uh, sheriffs that uh, had gotten together and said they were going to support Measure 105, which would be uh, the repealing of the sanctuary status of Oregon. It's a big part of law enforcement this year. Uh, do you support this? Why or why not? How important is this? I do not. Thank you. I am in support of Measure 105. Absolutely. Was there some misinformation when that came out? What happened in Measure 105 being the repeal of the sanctuary law? Our deputies should be able to ask if a person is a U.S. citizen or not. Right now they can and it's ridiculous. What happened was is one, one sheriff up north went to the Oregon State Sheriff's Association and said, uh, I want to do this. And great. The problem is what that did is that divided our Oregon State Sheriff's Association. We have to remain strong in front of the state. When that article came out, uh, it, and be strong in front of the state, because there's many other causes we have to be unified and united on, uh, not just you know, this, this issue. But what, uh, what, con what concerns me is that right after that article came out, it doesn't concern me, I was on the phone with uh, ICE the next day talking to them about a sex offender who's in my jail that I wanted out. He 
he's, he's going to do about a six month term and welcomed ICE to come in and interview that individual for the purpose of them conducting their official business and upon his release, you know, getting sent back to his native country. So if that tells you anything about where I stand as far as the immigration laws and the sanctuary state, um, I'm all for the repeal of 105. Yeah, that, that was different from what you told me in an email earlier. You were kind of agnostic on the or No, no, not, not at all. Because what happens is when you have one, one article, one, the Daily Courier, I'll just say it, mm -hmm. comes out with an article. Not everything I said is repeated, or, is repeated right. I probably okay. should have wrote it down for them. But I was neutral on the issue of, I was neutral on the issue of one sheriff putting this out, as was uh, Sheriff Sickler in Jackson County. And, all, and there was only 16 sheriffs that actually signed this for similar reason. So it, it, it's basically a case of misinformation okay. is, is what it boils down to. As I stated very clearly, I'm in support of Measure 105. However, Measure 105 is not strong enough to actually uh, repeal the sanctuary law. 181 would go away, but there's another house bill to back it. So it's kind of an unfortunate twist. Yeah, it's what uh, Sheriff Sickler uh, told me about that too. Mm -hmm. We'll look more to that. Uh, Jonathan, if you could uh, give us your take on this too, Measure 105, yay or nay, and just take it away. I am fully support of 105. One of the uh, jobs I had in my previous employer was I was a 287G officer. So for those who know what that is, or don't know what that is, I'm sorry, the U.S. government had a program called 287G, it was federal code, where local law enforcement officers went to the ICE Academy and were trained as law enforcement ICE officers. So I was a trained and certified Immigrations and Customs Enforcement Officer while I worked for Maricopa County. I believe that we are a nation of laws, and the laws apply to everybody within our borders. And those people that cross into our borders are subject to the same laws that you and I are subject to. And one of our laws is if you enter this country illegally, we are going to show you the border. And so I am, I am against the sanctuary state, I'm against the sanctuary city, and I'm against canceling ICE contracts. I would detain them and deport them. I spent uh, five, six, seven minutes on just this morning show today with a gentleman from Cape Junction who uh, was just uh, telling me or reading me the riot act about lack of control. This seems to be a big uh, story in Josephine County. Same with Wolf Creek. We get a lot of people who call from Wolf Creek and will write about that too. What specifically could you do as sheriff, I'll direct it to you first, uh, to, uh, to bring back those nighttime patrols sooner rather than later? With the even with the, let's just say it's with the existing resources we have. Let's just go here. Thank you. I rode with the Cave Junction Patrol a couple of weeks ago. We sat in the car and watched the people come out from under the rocks. And we watched the drug deals in the parking lots. And we watched the things going down, and I felt sorry that we couldn't pick up the phone. We had young teenagers in Jubilee Park drinking and having a good time. And there was absolutely nobody that we could call to come deal with it. Nighttime coverage, especially at Cape Junction, you know they have a contract for 40 hours a week. They pay almost 200000 for that. And they would pay for more, but they're told that we can't do evenings because we don't have enough resources. Well, we do have resources, and I think our deputies need to be working at night. Oregon State Patrol has more people on during the day than they do at night. So let them help us out during the day, when it's also easier for them, by the way, to investigate the crimes that they're investigating. And let's get our deputies, I call it butts in the seat. Let's get our butts in the seat at night, patrolling Josephine County, and let's quit telling the criminals, sorry, we don't have anybody on patrol at night. Well, I can tell you, I, I, I'm running the budget, and I know how many personnel we have, and I know what it would take to put nighttime patrols out there right now, and everyone else would suffer during the days when you call in for that for something that happened over the night or something happened right then. Uh, it's not as easy as just that. I wish it was. I wish it was. Otherwise, I'd already be there. Uh, but I, that's something I'm working on right now. It seems to be a priority, obviously, for Mr. Knapp and myself. And so I think that is a good thing for Josephine County. But you can wish upon a star. If you don't have any money to get enough bodies out there 
and dispatchers in support of that, then you got a problem. And so that's where, you know, I'm going to the Oregon State Police right now to ask them to help me. Oregon State Police is not gonna cover any call for service that goes through the Josephine County Sheriff's Office uh, during the day when we have people. They're just not gonna do it. They're gonna stick to their mission and they're gonna expect us to stick to ours. Okay, thank you. Um, why don't you, we'll start with you on the next question here. Is it important to be a constitutional sheriff? Why or why not? Are you a constitutional oh, yes. sheriff? Would you call yourself that? Yeah, I believe so. I think that the, the Constitution, it's our, that's it. That's at the foundation. That's the basis. And that's where it starts. And that's basically, you know, you look at the, at the immigration laws and the sanctuary state bill that we were talking about. It starts right there. And so, absolutely. I think I, I know I support the Constitution. I know I support the laws of the state of Oregon. And I'll enforce them uh, to the best of my, my ability. I really don't know how else to, how else to express uh, my desires for that. Okay, thank you. Jonathan, can you address the same question? Thank you. I too am a constitutional sheriff. I am 110% behind the US Constitution. That is a law of our land. Sometimes our states make different laws, such as the Constitution or the uh, sanctuary state law, and we are obligated as the sheriffs in the state to obey the state laws and the federal laws. And when they conflict, it makes it very difficult. But the prime document is the U.S. Constitution. And the U.S. Constitution trumps state law, trumps the Josephine County Home Charter, and trumps a city code. Uh, Jonathan, we'll have you start with the next question. Give me your evaluation of how the Josephine County Jail is run and what you would do, either the same or differently, if you were elected sheriff. Sure. I don't have the inside story on the scoop of how the jail is run, because obviously I am not the sheriff and they don't have open house for all kinds of reasons. So I can't tell you that there are drastic things going on in the jail that should not be going on. What I can tell you is that I believe that the jail levy was far more money than we needed to run the jail. So, um, I'd love to say we could give you back some of that money, but that's not the way that jail levy works. But the jail levy is more than sufficient to operate the jail for like at least the next four and a half years. And that freed up a great deal of funds. And I appreciate the fact that the sheriff worked together to get that levy because that did free up the levy for patrol and the other functions. But you I don't, cannot you address... don't want to close the jail though, just want to make sure there were some oh, rumors about that. Absolutely not. That was okay. a rumor that I want to close the jail. All right. And that's that was to fix some misinformation during the levy. During the levy, the statement was made that the sheriff's office is obligated to run a jail. Nowhere in ORS, which is where we get our law under the duties of the sheriff, is the sheriff required to run a jail. And that was my statement. Doesn't mean I want to close the jail. Doesn't mean there's a better option than the Josephine County Jail. But we are not required in Josephine County Sheriff's Office to run a jail. Grants Pass City Police Department could run that jail. All right. We're going to have five minute closing statements from each uh, from each candidate now. And Sheriff, do I get to answer that question too, or no? Yeah. We'll give them. I'll tell you what. We'll take a little more time. We'll let you answer that question too to be fair about that. It's been an argument over the course of time that do we have to have jail or do we have to have patrols? And I think I think every other sheriff flip-flops on that particular issue. I disagree with Mr. Knapp. I think we do have to have some place, not necessarily required to run, but you're required to maintain housing for individuals that commit crimes. I've contacted everybody up and down the I-5 corridor. There is no other place to put our Josephine County criminals, from Jackson to Lane to Lincoln to Douglas to Springfield. Um, I've done that research, been down that road. That's why I maintain that we needed to, uh, to keep a jail up and running. The jail is uh, fun. It's not only working for the deputies, it's working for the state troopers that bring people in. It's bringing uh, people from the city of Grants Pass in. We need to get them in custody. I can tell you we're up to 185. It's a promise made. It was a promise kept right now. Uh, the audit comes in October, and all persons, as promised, that are arrested in Josephine County are now being intaked into the jail. The deputies, I still have, I've hired 16 out of 442 applicants. I need to hire seven more, and uh, so we're still pretty skinny, but we're keeping our promise. All right, I'm going to ask one more, take a prerogative here of both of you. 
I'm going to do a what if because the Second Amendment question is probably the number one yes. question I get about the yeah. sheriff's office. No matter where I live, Joseph Jackson, Josephine County. We're going to play what if right now. And we'll start with, uh, with Jonathan, let you both answer this. Yes, we know that there is constitutional law, we have the Supreme Court, we've got the state, we've got the governor, we've got the laws, we've got the current county charter. Let's say the balloon does go up at some point, and we have a point in which uh, you have a president that just says, we're coming after him. It's been talked about openly, we know that. What do you, as a sheriff who respects the Constitution of the United States, do? They're coming after firearms. They're asking you in law enforcement to throw after it. What do you do? The Constitution is the law of the land. The Second Amendment says that your right to bear arms shall not be infringed, infringed. And that includes by the President of the United States, by the Congress, by the Senate, by the Governor, by the City Council, by the County Commissioners. So if somebody wants to come into Josephine County and take your guns, they're going to have a, get in line behind the Sheriff and his deputies because we are not going to let them take your guns. It's, it's not just going to be the sheriffs and deputies stopping them. You want the definition of a well-organized militia, you're going to have it. Because <laughs> it's, it's, they're not coming to get them. I'm very uh, staunch about that. And that's not going to change in me. I've owned guns since I was, well, 18. Uh, and uh, we, we pump out as many concealed handgun licenses as we can because I think all the good people in this county should have the ability to defend themselves. And uh, that's where I stand on the second constant. All right, thank you. We're going to have some wrapping up statements now, and I believe, uh, Dave, you'll go first. Sure. All right. Sure. Again, thank you very much. I got the three minutes correct, Bill. I, I want to thank you all yes. very much for coming. Uh, this is really important, and I was going to enjoy these because I get a good sense of, of where our county is when I get people in a group like this to, to talk and be able to ask questions. And that's really what it's all about for me. I'm, I'm your sheriff. I'm your sheriff right now. I want to be your sheriff for the next four or six or eight or ten years. And that, that's, that's my goal. But I want to make sure that I'm doing what you all want me to do. I want to be that person where somebody says, hey, we trust that guy. And I don't think I've given you much reason at this point to, to you know, reduce that trust level. We've done fantastic things in the Josephine County Sheriff's Office over the last four years. Please take a look at some of the literature I have over there and you'll, you'll, you'll see that. If, if you have a car and that motor's running good, why would you pull the motor out and replace it? We're, we're, we're going in the right direction. It's positive. Uh, I'm looking at nighttime patrols, which is a huge thing. I got the resident deputies out. We have more deputies on the street now than we have in, what, six years. And so, uh, and in your schools, and I uh, just can't say enough about the direction of our sheriff's office. Uh, I asked for uh, trust in the, initially, and I've worked on trust. I wanted to show transparency. We're showing transparency. So your sheriff's office has nothing to hide because we are your sheriff's office at the end of the day. And that's my belief, is that I work literally for each and every one of you. I work as hard as I can because my family is in this county as well. I know your brothers and sisters and children are in this county as well. Take it from me that when my kids were in this county as well, that's why I ran for sheriff, was because I saw what was happening and look what we've done, look where we're at now. So I ask you on November 6th, uh, please not read, but elect Dave Daniel for Joseph County Sheriff. Thank you. ORS has the job description for a sheriff. It's very important that we read that. The very first thing it says is arrest and take to jail those persons that commit public offense. We cannot do that without a fully functioning 24-7 patrol coverage. That has got to be a priority. We've got 12 hours. We need to add four more. We need to add eight more. We need to add 12 at night until eventually one day we have 24-7 throughout the county. If I'm elected as your sheriff, that is my goal, to increase the volunteer opportunities so that volunteers can sign up to answer your phone so that you never get that dial tone, so the volunteers can help walk you through a report, so the volunteers can come out and help take a crime report or collect evidence, 
so the volunteers can drive a jail wagon to Cave Junction to transport that guy back to the, to the jail so the deputy in Cave, Jun Cave Junction can stay on patrol. Response and performance is what you need in your sheriff's office. And that's what I want to give to you. Your sheriff's office is working. It's working, I've been told, good. My question is, do we want to stop it good, or do we want to move on to better and best? And I would like to make your sheriff's office the best, and that's why I ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you. Put your hands together for the Mr. Daniel, and the double page sheriff's candidates. Thank you very much.